How's it going, Knights of the Round Table? My name is Knight Gamer Rex, and welcome to the final episode of Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location. Today, we're gonna complete the game by getting the last two stars that we need. And if we go into the extras menu, I can show you how I'm going to do both. So, in the blueprints, you see that I have a little private room right here. I have to go back and continue night five, and then whenever we're turning around to whichever she's telling me to go left I go right instead and then it'll open up the private room for me and I can play the mini game down here and this is how to get the second star so let's go ahead and play the mini game real quick and I actually have to restart <laughs> already because you have to do you have to do this really 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 quickly so, you have to do it right. Yep, I should make it this time. Did I do it? Yes! There we go. And, uh, that's what happened when that girl was talking to me. That's what she said underneath the cupboard. So, when we go back to the main menu, should have our second star. Yeah. Alright, so now let's go to the secret room with the secret animatronic. And we'll see what goes from there. All right, so now I go forward and to the right. Access granted. There it is. Okay, now we play Five Nights at Freddy's, pretty much. It seems that you have accidentally wandered into a restricted area. Due to the sensitive nature of the materials that you may be exposed to here, you will not be allowed to leave until the cleanup crew arrives at 6 a.m. So hang tight. Rest assured that you will be promptly rescued, fired, then sent home. Thank you for being an employee. We hope that your experience has not been as regrettable as ours. Yeah, this is the uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, pretty much. Has pretty much similar music, similar layout, 
and everything, so. Why didn't you trust me? And yes, it does have a sound cue when it moves, so. Why didn't you trust me? It's similar to Five Nights at Freddy's 3 in that way. Ugly motherfucker. I thought you liked me. I thought I did everything right. Gonna happen. If they find us like this, we won't be able to try again. Gonna keep doing this over and over. That's all you gotta do. If they find us like this, we won't be able to try again. You must help us. You must, you must let us inside. No, you ain't getting inside the room. This is the private room for a reason. I like, I like how there's a golden Freddy. there. Come on, move. Isn't this why you came here? To be with it's her? ugly. I don't understand why it put on the mask. I don't understand. I don't know why Ballora went crazy, but she did. She definitely did. It even makes the same door sound effect, too. So much power gets used. You just have to be so accurate about things to do it right. Come on, turn to 4 a.m.
Yep. No, I'm not gonna make it. Definitely not gonna make it. Hi. Fuck off, please. Yeah, there's no worry. There's no way in hell I'm making this. Very unforgiving much. Oh, I have to go through it again? Okay, fine. Not bad for my first try, at least. Well, this is the kid's bedroom in Five Nights at Freddy's 4. What? What? What did I do? I typed in 1983 or something like that. Yeah, 1983. Sometimes I don't understand why people do things that they do. 1987? I don't know. I thought I did everything right. That's weird though, look! It's the kid's bedroom! And then this is the hallway. That's cool. There we go, I did it! Whew, that took like seven to eight tries. And I finished it with the Easter egg on because I know there's a fake ending and a true ending. So I don't know if this is still going to be fake, even though I put in the 1983, but it'll probably be the same. As the trees sway in the wind, there's my exotic so butters. Do emotions Woo. sway between star-crossed lovers? You burned down my house. Mm-hmm. You call that a house? It was like a morgue in there. I may be undead, but you're heartless. You need to see your son. 
The baby isn't mine. He ate the cat. Sounds like something he got from your side of the family. <laughs> well, how's this? I'm keeping the diamond ring. The joke's on you. I found it in a kid's meal. You bought a kid's meal? Oh, Vlad! Clara! As the hair on the back of a cat stands up straight, so also does the love between Vlad and Clara stand up against all obstacles. But what about the baby? What about the back child support? Stay tuned next season for those answers and more. Nice. Oh, shit. Hi there, Ballora. How are you? Okay. Well, that was that. And I don't see the text at the bottom saying if it was fake or real. I'm gonna turn on my gamma a little bit. I don't see it. It might be at the end where it says the end. That's apparently where it's been. But there you guys have it. That was Five Nights at Freddy's sister location. I completed it. Three starred it. Must say it was much easier to three star than any of the other Five Nights at Freddy's games. Five Nights at Freddy's 3 was easy to three star. But Five Nights at Freddy's 4 and 2 were near impossible to three star. And it's pretty cool that people have done it. Let me just go ahead and talk about what I thought about the game. Pretty much, this game is another Five Nights at Freddy's game, obviously, right? But this game took a brand new twist on to Five Nights at Freddy's that none of the others have. This game was more action-based than... Um, it was more action-based than... Uh, the... Five Nights at Freddy's mechanic-based. Where this game, you were crawling through corridors and solving... Uh, the, m not even puzzles, really. They were kind of just, like, menial tasks where you had to make sure that you kept in mind that things could come get you if you didn't check things. And that's what happened inside the breaker room. I almost got killed by, uh, Funtime Freddy multiple times. And if we go into the extras menu, we should also have the name of Ballora's endoskeleton. Oh, there's my ba my goodie basket. How nice of them. Uh, animatronics. Here we go, what's its name? Innerd? Alright. Innerd. And clicking on the basket does nothing. So, anyway, the, uh... The thing about this game compared to the other games is I like this game a little bit more. However, this game was far shorter than the other Five Nights at Freddy's, in my opinion. The only reason why this game took a little bit longer than it should have is simply because... During the secret area, I uh, I would toy around a little bit, and that's how I found the password to the bedroom of the kid from Five Nights at Freddy's 4. And you could see uh, Toy Freddy, or uh, the plush Freddy, sitting on the bed. You could see the closet slightly ajar. You could see the two doorways and the bedroom. You could see the hallway where the chair was sitting, where Toy uh, Springtrap would be sitting, or a plush spring trap and stuff and I think that's kind of interesting how that was implemented into the game either as an easter egg or as an actual reason I'm not sure that had a reason I think it was just kind of like an easter egg saying oh here you go you typed in 1983 which was the year Five Nights at Freddy's 4 took place however the thing about this game is I'm not a fan of Five Nights at Freddy's I've never been a fan of Five Nights at Freddy's I think it's pretty much just cashing in now especially with the theme park uh, horror house that there is, the merchandise, the posters, and the masks for Halloween, the little action figures and stuff like that. It's obvious that Scott Cawthon is cashing in loads of money off of Five Nights at Freddy's. And 
The reason why I skipped Five Nights at Freddy's 4 is I did record it, but it was very, very boring to edit and watch myself play it, so I didn't think you guys would want to see it at all, so I just deleted all the footage. It was a bad game. Five Nights at Freddy's 4 was horrendous compared to the others. Five Nights at Freddy's 3 was my personal favorite. This game now has become my favorite of the Five Nights at Freddy's games, even though this is a spin-off of the traditional Five Nights at Freddy's. Even though a lot of the same is in it, it still isn't a Five Nights at Freddy's game, if you know what I mean. But the game was lacking in a lot of detail, especially since whenever you were walking or going through the uh, the vents, it would say, hey, this vent has gone off. That could have been an excellent implementation for something to come through the vents and get you. And you would know where they were. They could chase you through the entire place. But instead, it was used maybe once as like a little scare factor thing and it was pointless right it, the alarm thing going off was pointless saying oh you've entered this vent or this vent has been entered or opened and it's just like well you know that was me doing it and you never hear anything else actually opening them or closing them so there's literally no point for that voice to be there am i right um uh, the thing with moving back and forth between the areas is, for some reason, I felt like I was very short. Such as I was walking from the auditorium. I was walking in the Funtime Auditorium. And it's just like, you look up and the door is like 20 feet tall. And I don't know why you would be crawling. You can be walking, in my opinion. Or is it like a vent or something? I have no idea. It's like we were just down on all fours. And I think being down on all fours would be louder than being on just your two feet by taking your shoes off. But, you know, it's not my decision. It's Scott Cawthon's decision. Was this a good game? No. Of course not. The story was lackluster. A lot of the... It, it looks like a lot of the things that he wanted to implement into the game weren't, but some of the leftovers of what it could have been are still there, and so I noticed these things. Some of the mechanics and stuff just aren't obvious, so you don't get them, especially in Night 4. Night 4 was really, really difficult, and I read the patch notes, and apparently it was near impossible before the, uh, the patch. And I had the patch already, so it was already stupid difficult. But before then, if you actually beat Night 4, it was, like, worthy of saying, Hey, I beat Night 4 without patch, uh, pre-patch, uh, sister location. Heck yeah, because it was almost impossible. I did like- this is my favorite Five Nights at Freddy's game. Number 3 is my second favorite, number 1 is my third, and then it would be 2, then 4. But... You know, I don't like the games. I actually just play these games for you guys to watch. You know, I never have fun playing these games. Like, when this game was first starting up and you had to hide in a little cubby hole and stuff, I thought that was kind of interesting. That was neat. Something new. Something interesting. And I was like, yeah, I'm all for this game. But then it started to progress and it started to become like a chance rage fest. And I hate chance games. I really do. I can't stress that enough. But Night 4 got me, it took me about an hour to beat Night 4, it took me about an hour to beat the secret um, mini Five Nights at Freddy's game with Innard. And, you know, that's understandable with the secret thing, that's understandable, it's hard to get, I get that. But the fact that one of the nights is almost impossible to get past, I think that's kind of mean. To some players, especially some players, are kids. Like, this game has been focused towards kids for a long time. And it's simply because of the YouTubers who play this are towards kids. And so the kids are just like, oh yeah, I love Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm gonna buy all of them. But if you see, like, Steam percentages, like, some of the Steam percentages show that most of the people who buy it, only about, like, maybe 30-something percent actually play more than... 30 minutes of the game? And I think that's kind of weird. People buy the product, but they don't play it. They buy the product just so they can support the developers and also say that, hey, I have the game, blah, blah, blah. And they never play it. <laughs> you know, I play this game, and I played it, and I beat it, and I went all the way through it. I three-starred it, 
just for you guys. Did I enjoy trying to do that? No, of course not. It was annoying and really hard to get through, but you know, this one in compared to the others was really easy. This game was really, really easy to three star compared to the others. Five Nights at Freddy's 1, 2, and 4 are really hard to complete 100%. Especially in blind mode in Five Nights at Freddy's 4. In Five Nights at Freddy's 2, it's hard enough as it is. And then Five Nights at Freddy's 1, 20, 20, 20 mode. And they all have their 20, 20, 20 modes except for this game. This game doesn't have anything like that. And I think that's... It. This took a new face to Five Nights at Freddy's franchise and I get it. However, I still don't like it. And I probably never will. It's just not my type of game. You know, I, I'm i a gamer based on skill, where it takes skill to progress. This game doesn't take skill, it takes luck, and that's pretty much it. Like with the original Five Nights at Freddy's, it was time management, where you had to make sure you remembered to do this at what time. And it's just like, well, that's kind of boring to remember those sort of things. And then after jump scare, after jump scare, after jump scare, you know, it doesn't get you. The, the jump scares in this game didn't get me. Except for at the beginning, you know, my heart was pumping. It really was. It was getting to me. It was getting the adrenaline going. But then after the jump scares, over and over and over and over, you get used to them. You really do. They're all the same. Even the sounds they make are always the same. But that's what I thought about Sister Location after completing it 100%. Um, can I recommend this game? If you're a fan of these types of games, yes, of course. You know, I'll recommend this game to you. But if you're like me where you're more of a Dragon Age playing, uh, Call of Duty playing type person, no, I really wouldn't recommend this. It, this game takes no tactics or skill. To beat, it takes more of luck, whereas like Dragon Age takes tactics, it takes skill, it takes knowing when to do this spell on this enemy because he's attacking your teammate which is about to die. It's all about skill and tactics, but this game is all about either memorization or, or uh, chance, and that's why I don't like these games, but... Also, like, some of the characters that were introduced into the game were used lightly. They were kind of just there all of a sudden. And who the hell is Ballora? And why is she... She got scooped in Night 4. And you see, like, now it's Endoskeleton, which is innered, took the mask off the top of the uh, hub room, where you can see the lights for Ballora and Funtime Foxy, it took the mask off and wore it for itself. I get that it wants to try and get inside of your body to take you over and take you outside so it can live on its own, and that's what it did in the bad ending. But what if Ballora never got scooped? Why did she get scooped to begin with? Like, why did the uh, people who came in on night four, why did they send her on the conveyor belt to scoop her? But, you know, it's not, it's not really up to me. It's like, how are these things sentient? Are they possessed too? I'm not really sure. I know our name is uh, the guy from the book. The Five Nights at Freddy's book. Yeah, he has a book too. Anyway, I think that's enough for me ranting. This was Five Nights at Freddy's sister location. Thank you knights so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please remember to hit the like button and also subscribe for more amazing series like Five Nights at Freddy's sister location. And also tell your friends about me so the channel can grow. It really does help. And as always, I will see you guys later. Hey, don't you knock on my door. Oh, fuck! No, 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 no. You don't open my fucking door, you bitch. Keep that shit closed. There you go. There you fucking go. Oh, that's eerie. I'm a heart beating. Got that adrenaline rushing to my loins.